Hey, fellow Mathers, before we get into this episode, we want to share with you how you can get access to free content, professional learning that will keep your students engaged and doing the math that matters. Get ready to go to this link, mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge. That's right. Registration is open for the free Math is Figure Outable challenge that's starting May 15th and runs to the 17th at 7 p.m. Central. We're going to have three nights jam-packed with learning and routines that you can take straight to your classroom. In these challenges, we have a great time. We do some math, talk about classroom experiences, give away super cool bonuses and prizes. You won't just walk away with routines that are naturally engaging and encourage your students to think mathematically. You'll also have a chance to win over 6 k worth in prizes, including a few virtual PD sessions for your school. I'll be joined by my wonderful co-host, Kim, and special guest, Jenna Laib. You can register at mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge for a fantastic learning experience. That's mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge. Now on to the show. Hey, fellow mathematicians. Welcome to the podcast where math is figure outable. I'm Pam. And I'm Kim. And you found a place where math is not about memorizing and mimicking, where you're waiting to be told or shown what to do. But y'all, it's about making sense of problems, noticing patterns, and reasoning using mathematical relationships. We can mentor students to think and reason like mathematicians do. Not only are algorithms not particularly helpful in teaching mathematics, but rotely repeating steps actually keep students from being the mathematicians they can be. Hey, Kim. (laughs) How are you? I'm good. I think think allergies are hot and heavy in Texas right now, eh? Yes. Yeah, what's in the air? Ah. Spring. All right, so we both sound like we're uh, allergying, so yeah. everybody just forgive us that we sound a little croaky today. I'll try really hard not to sneeze. <laughs> okay, no, and I Sorry. won't cough. There you go. Sorry. Sorry, editor. <laughs> Make me laugh. Um, I have to tell you that getting ready for this um, episode might be one of the most fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kim gave me an assignment. She's like, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> you go watch to, tv <laughs> go on, exactly right which it wasn't even tv because i just pulled it up on youtube which yeah. was on my phone yeah uh-huh yeah mm-hmm. okay so not too terribly long ago we uh came across uh, a really super super fun show and you can you can tell about how we came across that but um we want to talk today about the show number blocks number um, blocks. yeah and i know that some teachers probably know about this show but not all do uh, but we want to talk about it a little bit today because we think it's really fantastic. One, and do, two, three, do you remember? Four, five. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> I listened to one again this morning just because it's the short and cute. Um, so do you remember? I, I know we stumbled up across it again. Mm-hmm. But do you remember when um, I first mentioned the show to you? It's been a it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. I remember yeah. you telling me about it. And I remember thinking a cartoon, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> A stupid cartoon about about math. Yeah, I'm sure it's great. Yeah. Whatever. And I just, I just, I totally discounted it. But you had said something about like that Cooper was actually interested. Mm-hmm. You guys had a conversation, and yeah, I, yeah. honestly, I, I kind of discounted it until yeah. Yeah. until we were at NCTM 2023, and um, a hand to mind introduced us to Joe Elliott, uh-huh. who is the founder and creator of Number Blocks. He's a delightful British gentleman. And, um, he started talking about the mathematics behind yeah. what they did. And I was chagrined because I was like, yeah, Kim tried to get me to watch it. And I, <laughs> I never actually did. So I kind of pulled up a few things on my phone so I could kind of at least know what, you know, you guys were talking about, but the more he talked about it, the more intrigued I got. And then, and then even as intrigued as I was, when I finally went to watch it, I was blown away by the math that's, uh, correct. Like right. it's not only correct, but it's well done and it's interesting. Um, I, I, yeah. It, it, so let's talk about number blocks today, Kim. Well, and I'll have to tell you that I, you know, there's so many cartoon, catchy, whatever things about math for young kids. And many of them are, mm, <laughs> I mean, there's, you know, they try. But when I, I'll be honest with you, I was scrolling Netflix and I was like, okay, this is going to be awful. This is going to be horrible too. That's how you found it was just scrolling Netflix? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I had kids and so we we kind of sort out our, (laughs) anyway. So, um. (laughs) So you weren't scrolling for you. No, 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 no. no. (laughs) But, um, 
but I did. I, I saw it and I was like, oh, that's going to be horrible. And I, <laughs> and to prove myself right, I turned on an episode and I think it just picked one kind of in the middle. And I was like, huh. And I, and I watched like four or five in a row because they're short. Um, but yeah, I called my younger son in and I was like, hey, what do you think about this? And you know, it, whatever, we can talk more about who it's for, but um, yeah, we, I was, I was interested. You know, I remember more. when you first told me about it, um, I, 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 around the same time I was at a conference and uh, Hand to Mind had a booth and they had kind of linking cubes set up and I've, linking cubes are not my favorite manipulative. You, mm-hmm. you, they only link one way. It's like, ah, they're just not, they're fine. You can do some things with them, but I don't think they're the panacea that they were kind of made out to be, you know, yeah. like the, the big one, you know, like you can do all the things with thinking. Anyway, so I kind of had a taste in my mouth with linking cubes. Like Again, they're not bad. They're just not the, you know, winning everything. Um, and I saw some linking cubes stacked up and I remembered you talking about the show and my instant reaction was, yeah, if you just like line a bunch of linking cubes, you're going to have kids stuck in counting strategies. Yeah. And I don't want to promote kids, you know, always counting by ones, everything. So I totally just discounted it. I was like, A, linking cubes, B, B, you're just, all I could picture was that they were going to stack the linking cubes up and they would all be one color and you couldn't really tell and you'd have to count by ones. And I, I super just discounted that it could be any good whatsoever. And then, uh, I, I am now, I now know, I now, I now know better. All right. So Kim, tell us some things that you love about number blocks. Yeah. So we've already said a couple of times it's cute. Uh, and really that's not kind of my thing. So I don't, (laughs) I mean, Okay. Things, um, things could be cute and be terrible math. So then yes, we would, we would yes, not be suggesting yes, that. Yes, yeah. 100%. So um, one of the things I noticed right away is that they have a variety of models um, and representations to demonstrate number. So mm. it's not like... Like I just said, the one stack yes. of all one color cube. And yeah. Yeah. In fact, they make a big deal about Joe and his team, make a big deal for the characters that they can change uh, shape based on what's happening in the story. So uh, sometimes a three might look a certain way or, you know, a nine, a nine might look a certain way depending on the point of, of the story that he's in, but then it might look a different way if they're focusing on like square numbers in the story. Yeah. So let's be really specific. So you might see a one by nine. So, or well, I guess it'd be a nine by one, right? Nine, nine. Well, they have both. They have both. Okay, there you go. But usually I think that the typical view is a nine by one. So yep. it's a, it's a, it's a tall tower of nine mm-hmm. cubes. Um, but you, like you said, sometimes nine might be three by th- a three by three, yeah. a square. And you, and you actually, they'll, they'll build, they'll build it with like three, three plus three plus three is nine. And see now yeah. you're, I shouldn't sing ever. <laughs> um, and, in grandma, grandma mode. <laughs> I am in grandma mode. Yeah. Uh, I just, I had him yesterday and I will have him again today. I'm oh, loving my grandson. Uh, awesome. Close, close. Anyway, so yeah, you might, and, th- and then you might look at a one by nine um, if yeah. it's laying down flat. You also might look at a nine as a 10 where the top cube is in shadow. Yeah. Um, you also might look at a nine as a two by five, 10, a 10, that's a two by a five by two, really a five by two mm-hmm. where the, the top right one is in shadow. Yeah. So it almost looks like a 10. It's just one less than 10. I mean, and, and like you said, it depends on what they're trying to go for, uh, right. in the story, what, what they kind of, and, and so what's brilliant is they've created stories where they then, uh, showcase these different representations right. of numbers. Um, I know we were talking about nine, but if I could just throw in that there was one uh, I saw recently on 18. And so often in the teens, now I haven't watched them all, but from what I could see is they would often show it as a one by 10 plus the one by whatever. So if it was 18, they would have a one by 10, sorry, a 10 by one. Well, I, I'm saying that wrong. 10 tall, mm-hmm. 10 tall, a, a, a cube train that's 10 tall by one. And then a cube train that's eight tall. And so they have this 10, and eight and they're like 10 and eight that's 18 and they stick them together and then it kind of looks like this almost like a uh, 10 by two which would be 20 right with kind of those two missing yeah is that 10 and that eight so it's this brilliant um spatial way of kind of saying hey 18 is 10 and eight but yep. ooh, now we stick them together oh it's almost a 20 it's just two less than 20 they yeah. have these shadow things going on 
um yeah uh really and then then the 18 can be all these different shapes right because it could be that that funny where it was a 10 plus 8 but it could also be um what nine tall by two and it could be six tall by three did i get mm-hmm. them all yeah and then and then all of those laying down yeah so like a lot and they do that um not all at once not quickly, not like, bam, memorize these, but they'll have a whole episode on one of those ways of mm-hmm. representing the number, which, yeah, is totally cool. Well, yeah, I'm glad you said that because I expected, you know, the first episode to be about number one and then number two, number three, number four. And so I skipped ahead to like, I don't know, 64 or something like that, <laughs> thinking that I knew what it was going to be. And the number was significantly lower than I thought it was going to be. And I was like, what in the world? And so, you know, one of the really nice things is that they take time to develop, really, really develop the the characteristics of the characters Mm -hmm. by the attributes of that number. So in the teens, they might have an episode about all the teens and then, you know, another episode about the teens changing and then each of the teens. So they don't just blow through one number at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, I think even the number two had like three episodes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you would think, okay, that's kind of boring, but there's so much within those episodes, and they're short, really short episodes, but there's so much happening within it that you're like, oh, how did they think about putting that much into an episode about the number two? Yeah, and you kind of mentioned personality. It's fun that they've created different personalities for the uh-huh. different numbers. They have uh-huh. different voices voice the numbers, and those voices kind of play on these personalities. So the numbers really sound different. And uh, when they'll they'll sometimes they'll count or the you know numbers kind of call out. You can totally tell that it's a different person yeah. vocalizing that number. Um, so there's kind of some fun things that aren't necessarily numerical with that, but that but then help kind of make the numbers come alive like each of them have a personality and they have kind of a way that they act and they they uh have maybe different goals um which also plays into some of the humor that that um shows up yeah which is also fun yep um what about um well let me let me while you're thinking let me dive into the fact that that when they do those different shapes of numbers shapes uh, orientation arrangement arrangements of the cubes so these are all built on these these one by one by one cubes right they also then play on uh, things like the number three looks like a triangle. So they'll arrange it so it looks like a triangle. And then number four is, uh, th- there was an episode where they said four square hens laying four square eggs. And oh, you know, yeah. like, all, the, the whole song goes on and on about all these square things. And, and they, four is this big deal about being a square. And then later they introduced the square club. And which numbers can belong to the square club? And at one point they said something about no circles allowed here. Um, <laughs> and so again, they're just kind of like, it, 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 like you said, it's a short episode, but the entire episode is kind of no circles here because we're in the square club. Mm-hmm. Um, so lots of really nice, not just, we're not just learning the names of shapes, but we're also connecting shapes to number. Mm-hmm. So four is in the square club. What's the next number that can be in the square club? Well, that's a good question, listeners, right? Mm-hmm. Like what is the next number that can be in the square club? And so that, you know, they don't even, I don't, I don't think that they talk about the square club until they have a few squares. And I don't, right. I haven't said, yeah. I haven't watched them all before, but I would assume that they have like nine as a, a, in the square club and 16 in the square club, maybe before they start talking about, I don't know. But but for sure then, like, what are the numbers in the square club? Well, they're the numbers that can be represented in, as a square. So nine is a three by three and 16 is a four by four and 25 is a five by five. Numbers that can be represented uh, as a square. So that, that that's a really nice connection uh, that I appreciated. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because as I was thinking just now, one of the, one of the um, I think, really important things to, to draw out is that they in this show tackle some of these really important concepts head on. They they just they just say it is, right? Like a lot mm-hmm. of times in math classes, we we prep with vocabulary and then we give four examples. But they have these characters who just embody the characteristics and then they they tag it after we've already seen several of the things happen, right? Mm, so that's nice. yeah. it's yeah. you know, I, I'm thinking like as a third grade or fourth grade teacher. I would absolutely show an episode that's a couple of minutes about the square numbers and and have a conversation or have kids build what would be the next one that's in the square club. It's not too young that older kids 
wouldn't find some important mathematics within it and then want to be diving into the next challenge related to that episode. Totally. And I think there's enough humor and good comedic timing. Yeah. Um, and it's witty that you know, like you and I appreciated it. I think kids yeah. appreciate some of that. At some point, one of the numbers falls in a hole and it just the timing of it was so funny. Yeah. But I was like, oh, like this is clever, um, clever and witty. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's definitely not corny. I mean, th- there are some, you know, younger humor as well. Mm-hmm. But but when we met Joe, you know, we walked away saying, oh, he's he's sharp. Like he's he, sharp. Yeah. He's, he was witty. He's intelligent. Um, and you can see that come out in the episode. And one last thing is that, mm-hmm. you know, there's nothing that you and I went, mm, that's, <laughs> that's, that's not really mathematically accurate. They're just getting by saying, Are you, saying right we, you and I, you and I make that sound. Mm. Listen, I mean, we can, when it comes to, I wouldn't say this in general about us as personalities, but when it comes to math, we're kind of a little judgy and <laughs> but want to do it right. Listen, right? We, but what that means is if we say like this thing is worth doing, then I think, I, I think that's, you know, if our opinion matters at all, I think, <laughs> I think that it's, it's important, right? Like, yeah. You, you don't have, have to wonder. To judicial. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to wonder if we're just saying it because, you know, like somebody mm-hmm. said, Hey, talk about number blocks. Will you? And we're like, Oh sure. If you pay not it's yeah. like, like Not we're talking all. about number blocks because we are honestly um, impressed and think that they are useful. And like you just said, mathematically correct, mathematically yeah. accurate. Yeah. 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 Kim, can I just tell you a few things that are just not mathematical for just a second? Cause I yeah. just thought it was funny. So, well, so parents, the teachers, here's the thing to know. Um, it's the, he's, he's a Brit and this was made. Um, oh, all of a sudden my brain just stopped. Uh, BBC, right. It was made for mm-hmm. the BBC. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure. Mm-hmm. And so the, the, the speakers are British, the, the singers are British. And so there's thing, you know, they talk about queuing up, getting the queue instead of getting the line, getting the yep. queue. The number two, two has just a little bit of a, and it's football, not soccer. And they're going to sort us out. And, and, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. And now, <laughs> now, now in my house, oh, see, I don't do it very well, but anyway, I, I wish my, my British accent was a little bit better, but you might find your youngsters coming away. i um, thinking that numbers sound British and I, I totally okay with that. I think, I think accents are amazing. Um, I also thought the songs were catchy. One of the things that, um, Joe talked about was that they, he wanted to be, um, really uh, intentional uh, about having good songs. And didn't like, he didn't he say that he wrote a good portion of them? I think so. Or yeah. He was at yeah. least heavily involved in writing for those. I, I believe so. Yeah, and and they're good. I mean, it's yeah. catchy, um d- delightful kinds of yeah, it was really fun. Yeah. One of the things that uh, I wanted to mention was that like you said earlier, they build each number one at a time and yeah. often they'll spend more than one episode on a number or even more than a couple episodes on a number um they, as they build the numbers one at a time, they will build them both with addition and subtraction. Mm-hmm. So they'll have sort of, uh, let's build up to that number, but then they'll also have, Ooh, but we could build back to that number. Um, so it, like I said earlier, you might have to see the 10 and the, the one cube missing for nine. Um, that's kind of a nice, uh, you know, sort of, sort of, um, uh, shadow view of like what it could be, but we're missing just this one. But they also then will take like a bigger number and break it up. So they'll have um, e- e- even a, a early episode, the number three would, um, I don't remember what happened, but it, it bumps into something or something. And then all of a sudden mm-hmm. it's two and one, or it bumps into something else. And all of a sudden it's one, one and one. And they have this mirror that the, the, the blocks can go in front of, and then that duplicates them. And now they can, those, those duplicate blocks can jump on top of the original and bam, it turns into the new one. Oh, so, so oh. great for doubling. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Because it's, it's the, the number two is looking in the mirror and all of a sudden there's a, his friend is the same is another number two. And when those two number twos are together, then they can, the one number, the two can jump on top of the other one. And now they have a four by one or they could come like st- stick next to each other. And now it's a two by two. Um, so lots of just fun kinds of ways of building numbers by building them up, but also um, like breaking up the the bigger number into the smaller ones, uh, kind of fun. Yeah. They also use common things for that number um, to represent that number, to, to be connected to that number. So for example, uh, when they introduce the number five, the number five has a hand next to the five blocks. It's, it's mm-hmm. kind of odd. This is like this hand sort of sticking out uh, of the blocks, but they do high fives and they show fingers and they have a five pointed star um, and just sort of lots of things that are kind of fiveness that are involved as they kind of introduce the, the that particular number. They bring mm-hmm. out um, typical things 
that that uh, could be connected with that number. Um, a mathy thing that I noticed that was uh, I thought was like, oh, that was nicely done is they'll do things like um, uh, say lots of common things for the number three. Like here's three pigs and they'll go one, two, three. Here's three pigs. So it's uh, one, two, three. There's three trees, meaning that they're they're bringing out cardinality. Mm-hmm. So they're not just one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. They're saying one, two, three, there's three pigs. They're, they're, they're counting. And then they are accurately saying that the last number in the count represents the count. One, right. two, three, there's three trees. Um, that, that who, like who, where, where's a cartoon creator that knows that's a thing that we want to create in kids. And they do, uh, they do it really well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kim, I thought maybe uh, uh, you could tell us about one or uh, tell us about one of your favorite episodes. Oh, so um, I just rewatched this morning, actually. So there are so many that you could choose from. And like I said, you could start at the beginning, but I recommend that you check out uh, one of these two. So I really liked the zero episode and, and I'll just point out. That must be in the first one, right? Well, zero no. Episode. So zero doesn't come up until season three. I think it's like episode five or eight. So that that maybe speaks a little bit to, uh, you know, you could question like why the zero comes so late. Well, mm. zero is a complicated idea, right? So uh, zero came, comes- came late in the history of, of yeah. humans making math. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And so the way they talk about zero is, you know, he shows up, be- maybe it's a girl. He- anyway, they show up <laughs> because um, they're trying to give away a-, a pie or something. And so the three takes one away, gives it to the two, takes one away, gave it to the one. And the one turns with his 10 and then, like, he doesn't know what happens when he gets rid of his one. But then all of a sudden, zero pops up. And I, what I love the most is that zero is just a mouth. So there's no, you know, <laughs> each of them are represented. They have, like, two blocks with the two above their head or three blocks with the three above their head. Um, with the numeral three. Like, ten, right. ten blocks with the yeah. numeral ten above. Uh-huh, so you just have ten. this mouth floating around. And the first thing they say is, <laughs> where are your blocks? And he was like, I don't have any. <laughs> so then he launches into a song and in the song, it talks about scenarios where you have nothing, where you don't have anything. And he huh. uses words in the song, like nothing and none. So some of these common words that represent zero. So super cute, super clever. Um, I have not seen that one. Oh, right. you should right. check When it we're out. done, zero. I will go check out the mouth, the mouth zero. Yeah, That's zero. hilarious. Season three. You know, yeah. you, you, you can just almost see them thinking, how are we going to accurately represent this? If, yeah. if all the other numbers have these blocks. Yeah. That's it's amazing. a weird thing to try to represent. You know, speaking of representing, one of the things that I liked, um, there was an episode where they said, are we all here? Uh-huh. And then as they were sort of, are we all here? Then they would go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And as they would do that, they would light up the squares on each of them. Hmm. So you'd, you'd see the one light up and then you'd see the two light up and, and then three light up. And the order with the music from smallest to biggest also had a low tone to a high tone. Hmm. And then they were all like, oh, we're all here. Off we go on to a big adventure. Um, I, it's just super clever, uh, nice ordering. Speaking of ordering, I saw one this morning uh, that uh, so I, I don't quite have it memorized yet, but it had everything to do with balancing a bridge. Oh, we have to get across the bridge, but we have to balance it. Well, there's, and I don't remember the number. There's 13 over here. So we've got 10 on this oh, side. Nice. What do we need to balance? And then there were, you know, discussion about what they would do. And while they were talking about balancing, they had the greater than and less than symbols showing up mm. to say, if we only have 10 on this side and 13 on this side, the the, it, the greater than the lesson symbol was correct to show that the 13 was greater than the 10. And then when they had the three jump on so that they were equal, then the equal sign shows up. So like, like lots, of, lots of nice ways of having those symbols show up to represent situations that are happening. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was, I thought that was pretty nice. That's okay. Wonderful. I think you've got maybe one other episode that you want to tell us about today. Um, so the odds and evens episode, I, I can't remember where this one is, but um, the, the characters have to split themselves into team to play football or basketball. And one of the things that they did early on was they demonstrated the dealing out. So number one was a team and then number two was a team. Instead of just saying, Hey, let's make two teams and the characters scurry off. They deal out one, uh, one, one, I'm, I'm one, you're two. So three for me, four for you, meaning that the character name. And so they, they deal out. And it reminded me of when you went into a kindergarten class and you were like, hey, take half. <laughs> and I-, I totally thought it'd be the first thing. And those kids had never dealt out cards. Yeah. I was like, y'all play cards with your kids <laughs> where, they, where, where where you have to deal out so that they know that I have, you know, if you have, 
you get one, you get one, you get one, you get one. They, yeah. Then when we have equal piles, that's awesome. So they were yeah. dealing out to, to make sure that they had the same number on, yeah. on teams. Cool. And so they wanted to give themselves team names. And one of the characters says, let's be the yellow team. And the other one's look at him like, no, that only is you, not us. <laughs> and so they were looking at each other, trying to figure out what they had in common. And somebody threw a ball up, it hit him on the head, but the, the, the four could roll the ball back and forth. And it's the ball stayed on its head because because they, it was a square. You buy, the, the, yeah. They the, were in a, uh-huh. Uh-huh, they were in a two column, um, and so they they all wanted to try it, and they could all roll the ball back and forth. And they said something about, oh, it's because we have flat, even heads. Um, <laughs> and then the other, the odds couldn't do it, and they talked about their odd. They have so, an odd block. So out. Let me just stop you for a second, because I'm just trying to picture this. So all of the, the this time, this time, the numbers were arranged. That if you were an odd number, you were like a five by one or a seven by one or whatever. And if you were an even number, you weren't that way. You weren't a four by one. You were a two by two. Oh, no, no, no. So the odds had, they were in a column of twos, like two columns, but they had a block, their odd block stuck oh. out. So it's, it's, so they had a, they, when their ball tried to roll, they bumped into the extra block on the top. Ah, so, so okay, so the evens, the, the evens were in two columns. Yes. So like a six would have been two columns of three. Yep. And an eight would have been two columns of four. Yep. And a, I got to do one more. A 10 would have been two columns of five. Yep. But uh, the three was a column of two and a one. And yep. the five was a column of three and a two. Uh, col- uh, two columns of two. And then one extra on top was the five. Right. So, basic- so, like, yeah, so like one of the columns was three and one of the columns was two. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, so but they, it look, yeah, it looked like the even number before it, but with one more block. Yes, exactly. Uh, and that's why the ball couldn't roll. Because yes. I, I was picturing it falling off of one block, but you're like, no, it would like bump into the other yep, block. Yep, and then it or... rolled off. Yep. Ah. So that one was important, right? The shape of them was really important for this episode because it was about comparing odds and evens. And they the whole episode was about how they had this extra odd piece on top of their head. And then they literally called the, like the teams were called odd and yeah. even. Yep. Oh, that's amazing. Cause yep. they had like this even head and the ball could roll. Cool. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so you just picture these writers, you know, like thinking about how can we do odd and even, and how can we create a story that's kind of motivating and, and works. That's awesome. Nicely yep. done. Hey, one more quick thing, Kim, mm-hmm. um, a, a quick episode that I caught. Um, I should say quick. I, I only watched part of it, but it, as I was, uh, it, it was doing that thing in YouTube where it just kind of skips ahead. Mm-hmm. That it said an ifer machine. Let's do the what if. And I was like, the what? The ifer machine? And it is a it's a what if machine where it does something about um like what if and you sort of I, and I don't even know any more about that but I thought about your wonder game. Do you remember when mm. your kids were like, "Mom, let's play the wonder game." Yeah, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, no wonder you like number blocks. It has an ifer machine. <laughs> what if?" I like that. Anyway, That's I thought funny. about you. All right, Kim, who who is this for? Yeah, we got to wrap this up. We're we're getting excited <laughs> about it still. Um, so obviously, young kids, right? It's a it's a kid cartoon. So um, I have a teacher friend who's a kindergarten teacher, and she I went to do some strings in her classroom, and she you know they have one bathroom in their classroom, and so yeah. she said it takes some time to get kids after recess to go to the bathroom. So she turns on an episode, and the kids you know instead of you know wandering around, they sit down and they watch an episode of Number Blocks, which I thought was brilliant. Um, but also I have to tell you that when I watched, I think I mentioned earlier, when I watched these episodes, my kids came wandering in because they were probably like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. But they both slowly like sat down on the bed and were intrigued. And the conversations we had were what math is in here. And so they were looking for mathy things. Um, because this is your kids are not young at this point. No, your kids are teenagers. Yeah, Yeah. 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 I think this would be a great thing to do with pre-service teachers to say what math is involved in this content, this type of number. Mm. Um, and what, what are you noticing? I mean, can they pick out the math? What, what are they noticing about odds and evens that maybe hadn't occurred to them, you know, and they're ready to turn around, work with kids. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I tell you what, uh, my grandchild is only about five months right now, but it's in the plan. It is in Heck the plan. Yeah. yeah. With, when, when his parents decide that the uh, TV's a thing or shows are a thing, then uh, number blocks are going to be the thing grandma's showing. Yeah, I think there's little characters. <laughs> you can have stuffed animal number blocks at your house. But hey, there you go. That'll be yeah. super fun. All right. All right. Y'all, thank you for tuning in and teaching more and more real math. To find out more about the Math is Figureoutable movement, visit mathisfigureoutable.com. And keep spreading the word that math is 
Figure out a bowl. Thank you for listening and making math more figure outable. To learn even more, make sure you register for our free challenge at mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge. You are not going to want to miss the evenings of May 15th through 17th, starting at 7 p.m. Central. Math teaching, math teaching, go register now. That's mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge. Join us to make math more and more figure outable. And if you can't join live, register and we'll send you access to the recordings. We'll see you there.